Okay, church, we're going to go live in five, four, three, two, one. Hey, action. Amen. Hey, we're live. We're live here in San Francisco. Glory to God. Amen. It's exciting to be here in the house. Welcome to our online church family. Uh, we're going to have a great time we've been looking forward to tonight, uh, what God's going to be doing tonight and speaking the word he's going to be bringing through with the, the testimonies and the word that's on your heart and the worship. And uh, I'm just glad you're here. Amen. And so we just invite you to come in, squish in and and uh, let's open up our hearts. It's going to be a great time today. Amen? So praise the Lord. Amen? So let's stand and let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and honor and praise because you deserve the glory and honor. And we welcome you tonight. We welcome your presence here. Speak to us. Father, Lord, we just make room for you. Open our hearts and minds. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we go. Nayla, would you come lead us in worship? Praise God. Amen. Let's open our hearts. Let it enter his presence with thanksgiving. Here we stand before you, Lord. We glorify your name in this place, Lord. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. Night and day, let incense arise. 
Day and night, night and day, land is his arise. Day and night, night and day, land is his arise. Day and night, night and day, land is his arise. Day and night, night and day, land is his arise. Day and night, night and day. You are worthy of your own. You are worthy of your own. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy. You are worthy of your the glory thank you Jesus thank you Jesus you deserve every glory Lord every glory is yours Lord Jesus This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to, I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. We open our heart for you, Lord Jesus. Do what you want to, Lord. Here is where I lay down every burden, every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay down every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, I will make room for you, Jesus. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, shake up, oh, shake up the crown of all my tradition, break down the walls. Of all my religion, your way is better. Your way is better. We shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. We shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to.
us, Holy Spirit. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need you, Holy Spirit. Have your will, Lord. Have your will, Lord. I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. We surrender everything before you, Lord. We lay down everything before you, Lord. Have your way in every temple that we stand here before you tonight, Lord. Speak to earth, Lord. Speak to earth, Lord. Let us hear your voice clearly, Lord. Speak to our hearts, Lord. We make room for you, Jesus. For you alone, Lord. And we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give God a, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. It's good to be in God's house. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Maybe may be seated. I just feel the lovely presence of the Lord. He just, uh, like when he sings, it just opens, it opens something up in the atmosphere. I just... Um, yeah, I just feel that. I'm just really sensitive to that. So thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm excited for the word that's coming tonight. Amen. And so I just want to remind you our offering. So our offerings, we have different platforms to give. As you know, we have our online giving, text to give, or, you know, our website, you know, our drop boxes here back in the auditorium. And so our offering will go, um, you know, to sow into the ministry. They're doing a fantastic job over there. Some great things. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, what the Word of God is going to be having for us tonight. Amen. So, Brett, would you come and give us a little intro and some information and, uh, yeah, and introduce them. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Bob. Hi, guys. How you doing? You good? You had a, you had a good day? We've been getting um, very, very spoiled uh, by Walter and Bob. Uh, Walter, <clears throat> he is um, a, a great tour guide. I, I'd ask Walter questions. I was sitting in the front and I'd ask Walter a question and um, I worked out very quickly that he is a true man of God. You know why? Because when I asked him a question and he didn't know, he would say, Google it. So, <laughs> so we've got this running joke going, you know, <laughs> Google it, Google it, you know, but you know, we've been having some fun and um, yeah, uh, so yesterday, yeah, we got to go to Alcatraz and stuff and um, which is really cool. It's a lifetime dream of mine, actually, like growing up, um, you know, watching documentaries and movies and stuff. And um, today, Bob took us around as well, and uh, we got a bit of culture shock seeing, seeing what goes on around the city in some particular areas. And, yeah, just, in a, just an amazing place. But, look, um, tonight is, um, is Nalo and Mudara going to be sharing now. Look, they, as I shared... Uh, Tuesday night that they've been with us um, a good 10 years now and a real, a real blessing to us uh, in the church and um, in the ministry and they've, um, yeah, they've got a story to tell so uh, without any further ado, who's going to come first, Muda? Okay, come on Muda, come and say hi. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you, thank you. We are doing great. And we, yes, good to see everyone here tonight. I won't say much anymore. I think yeah, I will just go and dig into the uh, what we plan to, to talk tonight, maybe. But anyway, yeah, thank you so much. That is a great time. Yeah, pleasure to really honored and privileged to be here with um, Ba and Water here. So great, great, amazing uh, experience. Um, and yeah, tonight uh, uh, what I want to say is more about our testimony, what God has done and where we front. Just talk about our background. We come from far, far away. 
it's not easy for us to make this today. It's a lot of story. So we just want to go through that a little bit and then we'll come to like how God really do uh, something in our life in here. So yes, uh, our English is not good because we, can, uh, we speak uh, more than one or two, three languages. So English is our fourth or third language in here. So be patient. Or <laughs> and I hope that the Holy Spirit will be the interpreter for, for you or for, for us between the years. So I kind of prepared one of the um, PowerPoint slideshow for us because I believe that uh, it would be better for us to, to see the picture instead of listening to me talking. So... Yeah, so if uh, PowerPoint ready, can we bring that up? Yeah, cool, the first one. So that's the journey that we're just uh, talking about. This is mean for me and my husband here. So we kind of have the same um, uh, journey, the same background, similar background. We come from like uh, many di different countries, originally from Myanmar. So Burma used to know as Burma, but now they also call it as uh, Myanmar. And in Myanmar, there, they also have so many different states. And now they are like, the country is like messy, like ruining, like fighting, killing every day. The civil war, yeah, it's crazy in India. So um, from Myanmar, we moved to Thailand because we could not live in Myanmar anymore. And later on, we go to uh, New Zealand. So that's the journey. So, okay, next one. I'm going to like just go and talk briefly because of the time's sake. Yeah, so, so that's what um, it pretty much looked like, how my parents or yeah, our parents uh, fled from the uh, country. So they have to cross the river, the mountain. Yeah, uh, I, I forgot to say that we come from, um, we go to New Zealand as a former refugee. So we, yeah, former refugee, yeah. So uh, that's how our parents are. Uh, fled the country, they cross the river, the mountain with the children, they don't have the transportation, like no car, no plane. Yeah, so that's terrible, terrible. They could not live in their hometown anymore because of the fighting, the killing, the military, like coming to the village, take all the livestock or all the food or whatever. So they also like take the men from the household for the porter to carry their um, material, gun or whatever. So life in there is not good anymore. Our parents cannot live in there anymore. So that's why they decided to go to the other place, So which is Thailand. So we, we go to Thailand around 1922 um, somewhere. So next one, please. Thank you. So yes, for my husband, they went to the, uh, some kind of refugee camp at that time, like a shelter, you know. So many people fled, yeah. Many people are like run away from the country. They just run to there and then they live um, for them. They live like there for like many, many a few years. They don't have a house. They just have those uh, tents of tarp, yeah, to live in those shelter. So it's not easy, the life is crazy there. And on top of that, they can't just stay like that for, for one play. They have to move constantly, like maybe stay like that for one month or two months and then have to shift to another place. So that's where they go and live. But for myself, uh, my parents go to Thailand and live in the, another one, another slide please. Yeah, so my parents, they went into uh, one of the village um, Thailand uh, Long Neck Village, you might have heard of that, or may maybe not. Yeah, yeah, that one's quite popular. Popular for the tourists to go in there and visit and take a photo. And Thai authority make a lot of money on that. Yeah, so they kind of become a human zoo for, for Thai people. Because that Thai, we live in uh, Thai kind of border. So it's, we belong to Thai country, we live in Thai country. And Thai, like, um, use then showing like to the tourists, tourists come and come and the, the Thai authority collects a lot of money from the tourists and then they kind of share maybe 5% or 10% to, to the, um, the, the ladies who have the rings on their neck. So my mother uh, wear that, my, one of my sisters as well. And that lady in the middle is my auntie that she still live in Thailand right now. So and that, that too, uh, that, 
lady as well. Now she lives in um, Wellington, New Zealand. Yeah, but she take off the rain now. So yeah, so we live in there. I live in there. We can't really become any like citizen. We just stuck in there in that area. We cannot really easily go out outside from that village. So it's not really easy. So we decided. I mean, I decided to go to the refugee camp to become like a former refugee, I guess, at that point because it's not easy for us to, to live there. We become still like illegal people. And then I decided to move into refugee camp some years later. I can't remember exactly the year. So next one, please. So that's the camp that I used to live on my husband. We used to live in this big, big uh, refugee camp. Yeah, when we say refugee camp, it's, it pretty much looked like that. Yeah, in uh, 2012. And it was to uh, it was uh, used to be the uh, second largest camp. They have like uh, nine different camps along the border there at that time. But I'm not sure now what happened yet about that time. And huge, huge people like live in that camp, uh, wandering around inside the camp. They cannot really go out. And uh, yeah, so we spent our life there for for my husband's nearly 20 years. But for me, around like five years somewhere, yeah. I went in there and yeah, we met each other in the camp, yeah. <laughs> so we married in there and there, uh, yeah. Later, we decided to, to go somewhere, yeah. We can't just live in there, we got to do something. So later, uh, I think it start from year 2005, somewhere 2008, the uh, resentment program started to come into the camp take off uh, people that want to go to the, uh, we call it third country, whatever. So we applied uh, to come to US, but we did not get it. But thank God that the uh, brothers, uh, yeah, God brought us to the New Zealand. So we were able to go to New Zealand. And next one. So that the camp, I just quickly want to talk about that the camp. So we can't really go outside because they have all the checkpoint. Yeah, you have to like, you cannot go outside. You don't have the ID, so you cannot go out there, okay? But you can go the other side at the back of the camp. But if you go there, it's even dangerous because there's a landmine or like tiger or whatever you, you can face in there. So we're kind of wandering around inside the camp like a prison. Prisoner, yeah, but free prisoner. Let's just go around and around uh, without purpose, like day and day out. Yeah, so pretty much like that. And outside from that checkpoint, they will have a time military checkpoint. There's a real military with gun. So you have to be very careful as well. And sometimes people still sneak out from the, uh, from the other side through the mountain. And if they get caught in this outside, the Thai authority will send them back to the... Um, Myanmar to the Burma, so it get worse, so it's not really worthy to try that as well. So yeah, so that's pretty much about the camp, the refugee camp that we used to live. And next one, last one, so that's uh, during 2012, we will be able to like reset to, to the um, New Zealand. So that's how it looked like the um, UNHCR would come and take all the people, go outside. It was really exciting moment for us. We've been waiting, waiting, like praying for me, <laughs> praying, waiting. Yeah, I did not know God at that time, but I prayed in my heart. I said that God help me, help me, help me. Yeah, and I, I, I also said that God, you help me. And I, even though when I get to New Zealand, I still need you. So it's amazing when I come to New Zealand. I found God. I mean, like I changed. Yeah, I gave my heart to Lord. I never. I used to hate Christians, yeah, to be honest, yeah, I said uh, Christian, I mean, like, especially, we call it Baptist uh, folk, yeah, Christians. I, th I said that I'd rather be, like, um, uh, rather believe Catholic or go with the Catholic rather than, like, Baptist Christian. We have uh, quite many missionaries come to our place that time, but I said, no, 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 yeah, I just... Don't like that, did not like that. And I said to one of the uh, missionary one time that, okay, how about like if I believe uh, your Jesus and at the same time, if I believe my tradition, 
I still practice my tradition stuff, my culture, what will happen. That's why I asked one of the missionary. And uh, she, I think it's she, and she said to me that, okay, let's imagine. So when you, uh, you, you let's imagine that you have two cars, right? And you put your leg one side in, the, in one car and another side uh, leg in the, uh, another car and you drive the car, what will happen to you? That's what he said to me, yeah, and then you will die. So that's why it's really, like, good for us now, even, like, I keep encouraging other people that we can't really, like, a 50-50. We have to be, like, go straight. We have to be, like, if you want to be hot, you have to be hot. If you want to be cold, you just need to be cold. You can't really go, like, both sides, yeah. We can't do that. So it was really, like, I, I still remember that until today, and, yeah. Again, it was so grateful that we come to New Zealand. God changed us. Uh, we found God. And amazing that uh, when I look back there, I used to think that, why God? I thought that I was born in the wrong country, the wrong place. Have you ever thought like that before in your life? Yeah, why? Yeah, why? So, but now God has changed. God has, look, God, what God has done for us. Yeah. God using, I mean, I believe that God's using us to go back and share my faith to those people. Because I believe, I believe, I'm not believed, there are still many people out there that need us. Yeah. Uh, God said that there's a, like, a, I want to be like a, one of the workers for God to, to prosper, his, to advance his kingdom. Yeah, that's why I believe, I don't want to save this uh, faith for myself. I want to share it to the other people. So now I, I see that God turned my life, using my story, using my life to like uh, show God's glory. So in the scripture say like, uh, is that Romans 8, 28? Yeah. God, God work all things good for us. Yeah. He got, yeah. We know that God calls everything to work together for our good if we love him. And of course, I believe that Every one of you here love him, right? So if we love him, God do everything, cause everything into like good thing, although bad and become good. God has his reason, yeah. So that's how I see. Every problem that we go through, every pain that we go through is not in vain. God will use that to like change us, to use for his glory. So that's how I, I see it, I feel it. And also like another one saying in the um, Genesis 50, 20, yeah. So quickly go look at that one. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, Joseph speaking yeah, to his brother. Yeah, you may intend it to harm me, but God intended it all for good. See, the enemies intended bad thing for us want to steal us from us, want to kill us. But God intended it's always good for us. I said when we live in the refugee camp, when we live in Thailand, we used to like uh, try so hard to, to become one of the citizenship. You had to pay a lot and a lot to the government, but we never get one. And now today, when I look back every day, I say, thank God. Yeah, see what he has done. So I, I able to come to New Zealand, even better life, and able to see it to be part of the celebration center. I say thank God. So yeah, if any one of you that go through tough time right now or whatever, just remember that God intended for us is good. God work everything for us is good. God stay working on our problem. Yeah, so don't be uh, discouraged, but just have faith in him. Yeah, we need to have faith in him. Just trust in his plan. Remember, every try that we go through just to transform us. Yeah? Amen? Yeah. So God can use our experience, yeah, for his glory. Yeah. So that's from me today. Amen. Thank you so much. And now I would like to invite my husband. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hello. We all good? Thank you, yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, yeah. As Munda said, it's an honor and privilege 
to stand before you here tonight, and especially Bolton and Bob, that you open your home for us, you open your family for us to talk and to share, to connect it. So really, thank you. And uh, this is Holy Spirit here. I already feel His presence here. Because I believe we are here not, we are just a newcomer. We are not a baby Christian anymore, I believe. It's not the age, but all, all there in our hearts, we believe there, right? And, I, and also, it's honor. And also, I would like to honor Brad and Tanya that they, it's not about them, but that they lead me to this place. I believe that, uh, yeah, because I, my, my background is I grew, because where I was in the camp, there are only two churches. One is Catholic, one is uh, Baptist. So the old Baptist. So my parents were where they, they, they are Baptist. So I'm the second generation of it. I was, and uh, it's, you know, you are the second generation. You, you just take everything for granted, you know. So, and uh, this one, and uh, I've heard a lot about Jesus. Believe me, I've heard a lot. Uh, I mean, when I was young, they, they sent me to Sunday school, everything. I, I, I remember, memorized some scripture and uh, everything, but nothing is real for me. Just like a fairy tale. A long time ago, there was a guy dying, dying on the cross, pretty much. But uh, yeah, this one I'd like to say thank you, Brian and Tanya, that they are not telling me a story. They introduced me to Jesus. They put my hand into Jesus so that I can encounter Jesus by myself. So thank you. And uh, I'm really happy to be part of the celebration center as well, like Pastor Murray and uh, Nessie. For them, yeah, I really honor them and uh, all the celebration center movement. I believe this is the way that we go through. I know the movement is not that great if we compare, but this is the way that the Holy Spirit wants. And uh, for me, when I grew up, I never see those people like that, you know. There's no Holy Spirit fail. Everybody, like, uh, like the downtown that we walk in the uh, downtown today, San Francisco, like that, we kind of like a zombie. Yeah, I believe Jesus, but my spiritual, just like that, you know. There's no life. So when I come to create, and it's seen first day in the Salvation Center, Church, if God do it in them, He can do it in me. I want that, God. I want that. If any, I don't have that, I want to be part of them. I want to hang out with those people. You know, if they can see the heaven, if the, the heaven can open for them, I want that, God. If that promise for them, because the Bible says, for every man. So that's, that's me. So that's what I said to, like, don't tell me about Jesus anymore. Tell me how can I hang out with him? Tell me how can I be in his presence? Lead me to his presence. Because the Bible tells that the container already has to be torn apart, that we can into his presence, the holy place. We don't need to hang out around the, uh, the fans, around the outside, in the noisy places, you know? So this means so I want to be in the presence. And uh, this one, uh, this tonight, this one I want to sing and sing, even if, because I like music, you know. I like to worship, I like to worship, but uh, I don't want to be on, like, when I sing God's song or worship song, I don't want to be like a talent show. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want to sing a song that we all can sing together, that we can come in together. That's my heart. And uh, yeah, I want to be that present. And uh, I thank God that uh, he... Um, like Muda said about the refugee camps, that we are not here to tell about to have sympathy on earth, but just share about how wicked human hearts are, how wicked the other side of the world and here, they're all the same. They probably use different methods, but they're all the same. They're all the same. And here at the moment, they kill a lot of people. Like, have you, you probably know about the Hunger Game, right? Have you seen about them? That's exactly happened over there, which is a group of people killing another group of people. And uh, only those people, they are cheer for it to see the killing, you know? And the, 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 who, the people, like, for us, we ran away, and uh, some resistant group, they kill it. Some of their soldier bags, and uh, they posted it on Facebook, like, yeah, go for it. Kind of, they, that's 
the hearts, how much the weak of the hearts, you know. Exactly, like the Hunger Games, everybody cheer for it. Somebody, even some people like from a community, they, 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 some people come into the, like Muda said, we go to some in the United States, some in New Zealand, some in Australia, Canada, everywhere. And some people um, from that place, they ask you for some money to send them to, to support them so that they can get some weapons kind of thing. So I've got this, uh, uh, what do you call it, that uh, message as well to me. And if you, if you are in this way, you were already in shoe, what will you think? If I gave them money for them to buy a bullet <laughs> to kill somebody kind of thing, you know? So there's a lot of pressure because, like, for us, they try to bring you, you are in community, community kind of thing. You are part of the community. You, you should pay. You must pay. You, you grew up there. You pay kind of thing. So... There's a lot of pressure coming for us, and uh, and uh, within these years and on March, uh, before that, yeah, it happened a few years that they kill it. That are, I pray to God, even in a prayer meeting, and uh, what do we call that? That place, the uh, the horse, that mini mini horse, that place we call it. We have CG, oh yeah, showground on the showground. That uh, we sometimes we have a prayer meeting over there, and uh. One time, Brett asked me to pray for Burma, for my country. That's happening in the civil war, and I, I couldn't pray anymore because it's ache my heart to see that. And I, I just got up, then I thank you, Lord, have your way. Let your will be done over there, and I cry. Uh, yes, it's just so painful to see, to hear, and I, and this all, that's the short prayer that I've been praying in my life. And the bread said that this is the strongest prayer that I've ever, ever, ever seen. So, yeah, yeah, so, which is, it didn't mean I cry for it, you know, cry for it, but I, or I, I, I like, as, probably as you do, I own my, uh, uh, how do you call it, daily verses. I study the verse and every morning. I woke up and I look at the words, and I, one day I read through Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. And uh, back and forth, it's about the Gentile, like a branches connected to the, uh, the, the root, yeah, the vine, that, that thing, like our Gentile connected to the, uh, the Israel kind of thing. And uh, I, I read it through and, uh, a few times. And uh, then one day, one morning, God showed me on uh, verse 15. Verse 15, uh, I will read it to you actually in a New KJM version that, uh, for if they are being cast away, is the reconcile of the world, what will the acceptance be but light from the dead? So, uh, because of that new KJ version of my English, you know, my English is just that very basic, so I have to look in different version. What does that mean? And I look at the comments. And I, when I come across the, uh, uh, the Passion translation, it said, For if they have temporary rejection released the reconciling power of grace into the world, what will happen when Israel is reinstated and reconciled to God? It will unleash resurrection power throughout the whole earth. I claim that's my country included, my, my people included, that my family included. So I got up from my knee and I started praying for Israel. God changed my, my direction, you see. First I thought, oh, God, help my pe people, help my people, help my people. But God should change my direction, change my ways of thinking. No, no, Lord, you need to go to the roots. Go to the roots, no, Lord. If the root like this have the life from the root, the branch automatically will grow, we flower, we fruitful. God showed me this way. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And since March, this I thought it's only me, you know. So I'm, I'm just from uh, like. I'm uh, from a small place and uh, not much have education, but a uh, small place and I uh, like be part of the uh, salvation at a small church. But, uh, but I just think to myself, I'm a, a little small one. But what happened in, on uh, April, the end of April, that uh, have you heard of Isaiah 62? That happened. Isaiah 62, prayer and fasting for Israel. 21 day. And also our church and vision center be part of it. The first, you know, the first hour, Brent and Tanya be part of it. So I'm so honored and so glad that over there. So it's for me that 
hey, I feel so honored that God's telling me his story, that to pray for Israel as well, be part of that group, you know, the Holy Spirit leads. So it's built my faith too. So build my faith that, I, yeah, I have heard from God. I've heard from my God. My God. So I feel that it courageous and uh, that power, the faith in me. And then, man, I could, if I fly, I could fly, I would fly, you know, if I tell a lot of people. But at the time, it's given me come to clear. And uh, uh, yes, and also, like, all the time you read random story, actually. And I think <laughs> it's the right thing. And uh, yeah, this God has been doing in my life quite a few, a lot of time that I've told uh, uh, Walter that I'm a builder in New Zealand. We call it builder. But here, we, what do we call it? We build the houses. Construction. Yeah, construction, yeah. It's an air contract or, yeah, yeah, we call it over there builder. So we'll use that, eh, for now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because I'll, I'll build it and then, uh, Three years ago, I fell off from ladder. It's about a meter. We call it a meter, a meter height. That's my, not very high. I fell off from ladder with all my tools and all around my waist, and uh, I fell off and I landed on my bum and button, and then uh, my back over here compressed, compressed seventy five percent of it. According to the doctor, and uh, can and also like uh, some of the bone inside of it that's break break a little bit. But thanks God that uh, it doesn't need to be operated. Didn't need to be operated. But I have to be uh, staying home. Can't, 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 couldn't go to work for four months. Four months, and I just completely off work. And 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 then uh, and that time, during that time, that four months time, I'll want to tell you that that's the most precious time of my life. In physically, you will think. I couldn't do anything. I'm a broken man. But when you hit the rock bottom, then when you meet the Creator. That's what I feel. I feel I say, uh, that's what I, God spoke to me a lot. And at that time I studied, maybe most of you know that uh, the book of Job, right? <laughs> Everybody could go to there. <laughs> Look at his heart, he suffer. You know? Oh yeah, the book of Job. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, yes, you know, I, I went there as well. I went there as, and I went, look, look, I study a lot. And, I, and, and, then, and then, like I said, when I first grew up in, uh, in the Baptist church, they, they, uh, because my Sunday school teacher taught me one scripture, one scripture on uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. He said that, uh, because they want us to memorize, you see, every Sunday I, I'm, I'm a kid, so I have to go up there first thing and read about that scripture. And then they carry on with the, everything they, they do, like the worship and the service. So my job is, um, I mean, part of the kids, that group of kids, we went up in the church and they wanted to read that, memorize the scripture. And uh, my, my scripture is Proverbs 1, verse 7. It said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise, despise wisdom and instruction. And I have to memorize it, you know, memorize it, memorize it, memorize it. And then I grew up, I still stay in my head. You know, it's in my head, but not in my heart, you know, not in my heart. But, uh, but that, I believe that is an uh, incorruptible seed have been so in me. And, uh, yeah, I've studied it. When I came to New Zealand, New Zealand then uh, I, have, I don't have any connection, no families, no nothing, no language. You know, uh, like in, in a new country, and I have... Every like have to think everything. I have to go and walk to everything, and, and it's like at that time my heart is really, you know, I don't know anything. So I need God, you know, I need God because of my Christian background. I need to go back to God, you know, and then uh, that, and then uh, first thing I got that uh, fee, the fear of the Lord, and I start study the fear of the Lord at the beginning of the wisdom. Come, come into my mind that yo, no, I need. To escape from it, you know, this, this situation. This is my mindset, you know. So um, I went to uh, Celebration Center Nelson, and Brett was preaching. And my English is very little, you know. This is only know how to read and write ABCD. And I start hearing Brett preaching. His English, you know, Kiwis, you know, their English, 
for me it's too hard, too hard. Because I used to, sometimes I used to watch the American movie, so I'd rather listen to American say, speaking, you know, but uh, a Kiwi. So it's really hard, but, but like I said before, the one thing that he's, he just, he, the only thing I uh, hear, he's, I understand his words that anybody, if you want to give your heart to the Lord, come in the front. So I got up, you know, as a, you know, as a religion, as a, my culture, we, we don't really go out in front of people like that. It's really how we are shy people, you see. And about I, I look around and I got up there. I have a go, you know. I have a go and I go there and then I, and I, I just whatever breath saying and pray. I, it's not getting to me, but I just raise my hand and God I give you my heart to you. And, I, and then the Holy Spirit come down to me and. I, like, show me everything that I have done in my life, you know. I was 38 years old that time. I showed me, and I kind of felt like cleansing me, cleansing me. <clears throat> and uh, now I know that that's, that, that I know now that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know that time what happened to me, you know, what happened to me. What, that's weird, you know, that's weird. And then uh, since then, I understand learning about that scripture again, the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of the knowledge or of the wisdom. And that's, and that's what I start, I start to know that the fear of the Lord. So what does this mean, the fear of the Lord? It's me like, for me at that time, understand that uh, to escape from God's judgment. To escape from ju- God's judgment, that's the fear of the Lord. For me, understand that it's time. But like I said, after, the, uh, after my back broken that time, come back to that, the fear of the Lord. He changed me, gave me more revelation. It's not only to escape from the judgment of God. It's not, it's not about that. It's not about to escape from the judgment of God. Because I would like to show the scripture. It said to me, because I studied the Job, right, again. Job chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Job chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. It say here, I'll read it to you, that... Saying that our son to the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. Saying that it was all the accuser, so we'll say now accuser. He accused, like Job, he said that Job. Because you protect him, you bless him, you give him, you heal him because you gave stuff to him so that he just serve you. If you take those away, can he still do it? Can he still do it? So I ask to myself, am I coming to God? Yeah, people pray for me for my back, 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 back that time, my heaven, but uh, in coming to myself that, am I coming to God just to be healed? If I'm healed, then what will I'll do, you know? Am I still go back to God or not? You know, there's a question come to me, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, and I like the accuser, the sender, come to like Job, that uh, Job does probably say like Job, Job if you s- said like this way, Job doesn't actually serve God. He's serving himself. That's why the accuser say, right? The sinner say, he's serving himself because he wants to be rich. That's why he serves God. Pretty much, he go to God for, for, for blessing. But we know the Job story. And then uh, that, that, that question also come to my thought. Do I serve God just to be healed? Do I serve God just to be blessed? Do I serve God just to have a job? Do I serve God just to get rich? Just to be popular? Do I serve God just to sing at the front here? To be uh, famous? You know? And, uh, yeah, because um, I now, now I understand that uh, to have a relationship with God is not based on an I thing, isn't it? Yeah, because... So in my mind, is, can I serve God as who he is? As uh, Daniel, in the book of Daniel, about that, uh, Daniel, three friends, right? They said they're going to throw him into the uh, fire, 
fire and they, uh, the three friends said that uh, the, 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 uh, the king, the king, the Nebuchadnezzar told him that, uh, let's see if your God is going to save you from the fire. But then the friend said that, uh, yeah, our God is going to save her. If he, even if he doesn't save her from the fire, we'll still not serve your God. We'll serve our Lord. That they're hard of them. And there's the Old Testament, we know all the, them. And also the New Testament, we look at all the uh, apostles and stuff. Those guys, they do not suffer for, for themselves, you know. They do not suffer for themselves, but they serve for the Lord. Even they, their life have been vanished, but uh, they still serve the Lord. So for me here, I'm just in my little bubble. And then, uh, am I, can I serve God without receiving anything? And yeah, the Bible tells us that uh, uh, it's better to give than receive, you know. But, but those stuff, it's all around the scripture, but it never comes into my heart, you know. But that scripture really stuck it to me that uh, does Job fear God for nothing? So I asked him, I said, does Nello fear God for nothing? Can I be in that position? That's, that's the heart that I want now. That's the heart that I want it. So now I understand that uh, that's why fear is not only about just to escape the judgment of the God, but worship God with reverence and awe, with honor, who He is, who He is worthy, He is holy, He's the creator, me and you. And this is the motivation factor for me and you that we need to surrender ourselves for God. I know I'm not surrendering them all. There are some point, some area that I try to hide or that I didn't know that's why I need Holy Spirit to enlighten in me. Have a big spotlight then and put it in me that show it to me, Lord, help me to fight those area so that I can surrender before you, to you. That's my heart. And I believe all of our hearts have the same, isn't it? So this tonight, if you have the same, let, let us stand, eh? Let us stand out. Let's, let's enter. He, he's already here, I believe. <clears throat> he's already here. And uh, we're going to enter his presence. We, let's, we're going to enter his presence. As who, who he, he is tonight, let us worship him. Forget about everything in our life. Yeah, we know. We face difficulty, a lot, a lot of stuff, but can we just worship Him as who He is tonight? As we say before, we, we're going to give Him everything. We're going to lay out everything, our tradition, our, our religion, our thought, our everything. We set aside, we lay before Him. And we, I'm going to sing this, the same song again, and I let us... This is my surrender, this is my surrender, here is where I lay down, every lie and every doubt, this is my surrender, I will make room for you, to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to
We pray we speak in tongues in this church. Shukurabarabakai. Koraba. I want everybody, if you have the gift, Shukurabarabakai. Let's stir up. Let's stir up our spirits in Jesus' mighty name. Korabashikiarabarabakai. Korabarabakitiana Maharabahai. Shukurabababa. Korabakai. Just keep praying in tongues, church, and I'm just I'm going to just uh, exhort us. And uh, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, that we're not the tail, but we are the head. Not because of who we are, but because of who you are on the inside of us. We're not victims, but we're victors in Jesus' mighty name. We're not under, we're above in Jesus' mighty name. We're men and women of God. We walk not by sight. But we walk by faith. We walk by the truth, Lord, of what your word says. And we want to thank you tonight, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord, in the midst of us. We want to thank you for John 17, 17, that your word is truth, Lord. Hallelujah. And Paul said to the Philippians, being confident, of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, of His return. And we want to thank you, Lord, that that's your word, that you're going to complete the good work that you've begun in each and every one of our lives, Lord. We want to thank you that you're building your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord, that you know the beginning 
from the end and everything in between. And the faith walk is the everything in between. That you see. You see the beginning from the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that your promises, that your promises to Daring Faith Celebration Center, San Francisco are all yes and are all amen. You know, church, you know, church, the... Jesus said that He would give us the keys to the kingdom. And one of the words that's been stirring in me just while we've been here in San San Francisco is that the kingdom of God is voice activated. just want you to meditate on that just for a minute. You know, seven or eight times, you know, in the book of Genesis chapter one, God spoke and then he saw. Just Genesis one, three. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God spoke and he saw. And if you go through Genesis 1, here's our homework. If we go through Genesis 1, we'll see time and time again, God spoke and then he saw. Let there be firmament. And there was, he saw. God spoke and he saw. The kingdom of God is voice activated. And I believe that this is a key for our church Daring Faith Celebration Centre San Francisco is we speak and we see God spoke and He saw Mark 11 23 Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. I really believe there's a key here. You know, the book of Proverbs says that the the power of life and death is in the tongue. And I really believe that for us as a church that we've, we've got to discipline ourselves to speak life. The kingdom of God is voice activated. If we're coming in agreement with the enemy and this isn't happening and that isn't happening and this isn't happening and that isn't happening, you, you, it's, isn't it amazing that, um, that, that the power, the power of life and death is in the tongue. The tongue has power for the kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom of light, or for the kingdom of darkness. And we've got to discipline our tongues. We've got to discipline our tongues to speak words of life in and over, in and over our fellowship, in and over our people, yeah? And this is, this is what I would encourage us to do. Uh, Let me just see if I can... I'm not even sure if I wrote it down, but you know the scripture in Psalms and it says, you can Google it, uh, it says that life, uh, sorry, not life and death, it says that um, I shall not die but live and declare the works of God. 
You know what I'd be as a, as a discipline? Once again, you're not the nod to God crowd because you're here on a Friday night, you know? What I would be, dis- what I would be saying is, is as a declaration for, for our family, spiritual family here in San Francisco, is daring faith, Celebration Centre shall not die but live and declare the works of God. Let's speak life. Let's speak life. The harvest harvest is coming. The souls are out there. The harvest is coming. You know, even as we begin to speak the Word of God, it's our spirit begins to lift, you know, because the enemy wants to come in like this dark cloud and he wants to settle on the church. You know, the, the, the assignment of the devil on every church is, is a religious spirit which brings death. A form of godliness, 2 Timothy 3, a form of godliness, but no power to change life. It's a false, it's, a, it's, the, it's the counterfeit spirit of the Holy Spirit, the religious spirit. And what we want to be aware of is when we're coming in is that we're busting off that that dark cloud that would try and just come in and, and, and sit on the church and shut the church down. And even now we break the power of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke every demonic spirit assigned against daring faith. Celebration Center in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we're going to get this right because I thought it would be good for us to finish on this tonight. Remember, the kingdom of God is voice activated. It's voice activated. We're going to speak life. So I'll go through it and, and we're going to declare this tonight. That's daring faith, celebration center, shall not die but live and declare the works of God. Amen. We're going to speak life. See, this is building in the Spirit. This is building in the Spirit. We do what we can do in the natural, but the real real work is done in the Spirit. You mature believers here. So, I don't know, we might just get comfortable, you know, you might want to just start to just, we've just got a couple of minutes, but I'll just declare that scripture again and until we all get it. So, Daring Faith Celebration Centre shall not die, but live and declare the works of Almighty God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Korabashikarabai, korabarabakai. Let me just find let me just, you guys okay? We only got a. All right. Yeah, so it's it's um it's Psalm 118, verse 17. Let's get it in our spirit. Daring Faith, Celebration Center, Nelson. Celebration Center, San Francisco, sorry. <clears throat> Shall not die, but live. Amen. And declare the mighty works of Almighty God. Amen. Let's do it again. Daring Faith, Celebration Center, San Francisco. Shall not die, but live. And declare the works of Almighty God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. Let's give Him a shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. So what I want us to do, what I want, us to, what I want to encourage us to do as a, as a fellowship is begin to speak to those mountains. Speak to the mountains of shutdown, you know, in your prayer meetings and that. Really get, you know, by the Lord, really get focused and start... That's what the word says. Speak to the mountains. And if you don't doubt in your heart, they'll be removed. So what, whatever the mountains are, if they're discouragement, let's get real here. If they're despair, if they're hopelessness, if whatever's going on, whatever you say, speak to those mountains. As a corporate body, speak to them and say, be gone and cast into the sea. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's start addressing this stuff. We're... We're mighty men and women of war.
but we're just, the devil wants to pull us down into a pity party. And I always remember Mel Maloney saying that the devil gets you into a pity party, into, um, into self-despair and into, um, what's, what's the wording I'm looking for? Um, um, self-pity is the devil's workshop. Okay, so we've got we to gotta fight. We've got to use the sword, which is the Word of God, and, and overcome. Amen. Amen. God's given us the weapons. We just gotta, we just gotta use them. We just gotta use them. And we're gonna see the mountains go in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for an open heaven over this place. Thank you, Lord, that this place is ready. It's ready for the harvest, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand and a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Walter. Are we done? Are we handing it yes, over? Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. Wow, amen. Let's give God a hand clap because it's been awesome. Praise the Lord. Amen. We receive that. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Move on your story and your slides. And uh, Nalo, that was fantastic. Your testimony and your ministry of the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's thank you for that. Praise God in your spirit. Brett, thank you for those words. Praise God. We receive that. Amen. Keep that sealed in our heart. Father, we thank you. We receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's going to be a great day today. Amen. Praise the Lord. So tomorrow our Saturday prayer meeting is online only. So it's first Saturday online only because it's the first Saturday of the month. So you'll get the link at 8.45 a.m. the text. So online only. So we're going to be declaring tomorrow morning in our Zoom call. Amen. And then Sunday, 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 bring a friend. 10.30 It's going to be great. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. They'll be with us again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Invite somebody and send a text and even just send it anyway. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being here. Praise the Lord. Bless you guys. See you tomorrow morning and uh, prayer meeting, Zoom, and church on Sunday. Yeah. Prayer tomorrow online. Bless you.